Delicious looking. Oh, gosh. Tell everyone it's going to be a big day. All right. Well, Anya didn't want to tell you, but I just had my drink that turns me into Superman, so I'm not afraid to tell you. Today is going to be a big day. We have what is called in the hay industry, well, maybe not as a whole, but in, in our personal farm, the great balancing act of inventory. And today is a perfect episode to show you that. We are going to specifically, deeply, finally highlight the inner workings of how we manage inventory around here. And by that I mean, if we're running low, we just try to buy more. We have two ways in which we primarily manage our inventory, at least on first cut. We rebale or we find small squares to begin with. We're doing both of that today. Two. We have two ways in which we primarily manage first cutting and sometimes second cutting grass. We don't rebale or really even buy and sell much alfalfa. It's just not really our market. Today we're gonna to be doing both. We're gonna be rebaling and we're gonna just be buying in some first cutting, trucking it in and bundling it ourselves. It's exciting, very exciting. It's gonna be a day of hard work. We love it. So Robbie got out here earlier than me. I was uh, trying to figure out how to pay the property tax bills. They're due in three days. He got this beautiful load of Timothy large squares ready. This is our own product that we bailed. My dad and Carl shipped them in from our uh, secondary storage facility the other day. We will get these. We will get them rebailed. We have to have a load of 777 of these ready to pick up Saturday morning. We have a single customer that buys 777 of these bales every week. So that's what we're getting ready for. Oh yeah, that Ford Purr. If you don't like Fords, that's fine. You can uh, keep watching the channel, but my only suggestion is to start liking Fords because they're a really supreme vehicle. Eagle has landed. Let me give you guys a quick rundown on what's going on again in case you haven't seen the previous episodes. We are over here rebaling. What is rebaling? Well, in our particular format, it is taking three by four large squares that's either our own product or that we bought in from another farmer breaking them down into between 40 to 50 pound two string bales and putting them in 21 bale bundles again. So how do we do that? Well, we start by putting the large squares on the conveyor table over here, cutting the six strings, six strings off the bale. You have a roll or a conveyor, this chain, that slowly pushes the hay into this Messix bale converter. This converter has webbings in there that constantly go up, pulls flakes apart, hits a reversing auger up there, the augers, right here, that kick on this table which will be running, that goes through your standard baler, that bing bang packs, flakes, ties, strings together, these two string bales, which goes into the bundler. The bundler then does his thing, bing, bang, boom, clank, ching, puts 21 together and spits out a beautiful bundle at the back. These bundles are extremely nice. They slide into box bands, either too high or flipped three high, right in, they fit perfectly logistically into a box band and it's about the primary way that we ship this product out. I would say the majority of this product makes its way into the North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, and Arkansas hay markets. Here we have some inventory built up. And you can see that we do have differences in inventory at times. And just being completely honest, the differences come from when we buy in product from other suppliers. Uh, the consistency, especially this year, has been a really big issue. Um, you'll get a couple semis of really, really nice product. And then a semi will come in and the color is just way different. And uh, it just kind of is what it is. Everyone's struggling a little bit with volume and quality this year. And so we're all feeling it. No one's alone. Ready for it up? Yep. We got things humming along pretty well. Uh, it's been about 30 minutes since I talked to you guys last week. We did some clean up. These machines take a while to warm up, so they don't really get running smooth for a bit, especially on these cold mornings. We've moved into a really nice batch of Timothy. Things are flowing well. I just 
got the message from the farmer that's bringing a load of like 725 individual bales to us. He's about two hours away, so we got about an hour and a half to uh, kick it over here with the rebaling system and try to get some stuff done. Our goal specifically today is to make 777 of this particular batch that is going on Saturday. Today is Wednesday. And I think we're on track to get it done here fairly decently. We're probably we're shooting out probably 220-ish bales an hour or so. It's going pretty well. We have the bales here. Here's our fancy staging indicator, meaning that there is still one string on this bale here. You don't want to feed it into the uh, destroyer with the, with the string on, obviously. We're very happy with this stuff. I could probably speed it up a little bit, but I'll just continually chase my tail all day because I've been adjusting it for a while and I get build up up there if I move it too much, so I'm just going to leave it out as I'm comfortable with the flow, I'm comfortable with the consistency, I'm comfortable with how chewed up the hay is and all that, so we'll go ahead and leave that. Dust control is really good right now. We've got a nice wind sucking everything out of the barn that way. The only thing I feel bad for is that poor little open station tractor. We take a leaf blower and blow the radiator out every day. And what more can you do? We are pushing out about 45 pound bales. The Baron is working well. Bobby's over here hitting it, organizing, loading trailers. We are expecting some rain tomorrow, so Rob is getting trailers loaded up out of over. Let's see if we can turn the camera here. Rob is pulling inventory out of here, putting on the trailers, so that way if it is raining tomorrow and we decide that we need to rebale, bale and just set it in the barn because you can't really stage anything outside. Pretty much busier than me or whoever the guy on the ground is. All I had to do is pretty much keep an eye on the rebaler, keep a general eye on the rest of the machines, make sure they're functioning well. We do some general cleanup here and there. There's two particular areas that we try very diligently to keep clean. And that's because if you don't clean it, it gets jammed up and the machines tend to not function as well. And that's under both sets of knotters that we're using. So, keep it clear right now. Under this knotter set for the actual baler, we'll pull that out because we don't want anything to pack up the fingers and, and mess with the knotters. We'll do the same thing under the four knotters under the bearing here. Pull that out. And those are the two areas that we try to diligently keep clean. The rest of it is just general sweeping here and there and just making sure nothing backs up. When something goes wrong with the Baron, there is a light on the back side of it that flashes up right there, if you can see it. We tied that into another wire that flashes right here. Because a lot of times, if you're standing right where I'm standing, you can't see that the Baron the tie cycle or it backed up or something's jamming the gate or anything, one of the alerts you get. When you're right here, that goes off and it's really, it works out really well. Nina decided today that she wanted to wander over and enjoy the rebaling setup. It's not exactly where I would choose to uh, hang out, but she's just an old dog looking for some company, huh? attached to my dad at the hip and he's not home right now so she's just kind of wondering who to hang out with. This video today I hope you guys enjoy it. It was not specifically meant to be a full-blown rebaling day. I'm going to do another one of those because here's some foreshadowing and we're super excited. We sort of, kind of, maybe got a sponsor. I'm not sure if sponsor is the word because there's no contractual agreement or anything. They just sent us some products that they'd like us to use in the rebaling setup and we're going to review them and see if they work well. I guess it's just a review. Anyways, we got some free stuff, so that's pretty cool. And we have to implement it into the rebuilding system, and we'll see how it works. But I'm, I'm being a bit long-winded here. If there's something that you guys would like to specifically see about this system, let me know in the comments, and I would be happy to try to hone in on that. If there's there's one thing that you really wanna really wanna get after and check it out. 150, 200 pounds? No. No, it's awkward. I've got some pretty good news if it pans out. I finally get to show you guys like the all-encompassing segment of something. So we showed you rebaling. Now we're going to show you us buying in hay already baled in small squares and bundling. 
And lastly, we have another truck coming of bundled small squares that we're gonna pull out of a box van again. It's the perfect trio. But first, we have to get to the priorities. I have to feed the important animals on the farm. The work cats. So I feed them in two locations because I'm worried that some of them don't venture out and find truck I'm pretty sure we're feeding four of them. So if it's an even split of two, then we're good to go. Barn cat number one should be waiting outside the door. We will see. You're not a barn cat. What are you doing? You're not a barn cat. Anyways, we elevate the bull so hopefully uh, that large barn cat in disguise doesn't, <laughs> doesn't get into the food. She definitely doesn't need any more food. Supposed to keep intruders away. Hmm. Oh, barn cat's still full from before. All right. Well, we'll just wait. This one is not terribly kind. Alrighty. Sorry for that short break. Back to action. We'll have the truck pull up right here and put the ramp behind, and hopefully, we'll be all good. This truly feels like Christmas morning. Beautiful load of nice hay coming through. Mr. JB, good How morning. How you doing, sir? Better than Mr. Gargus? Better than I deserve. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yes. How many you got on here? I did not count the bales okay. since we're doing it by the ton, yeah, but it should be 725 or 740. Awesome, cool. We're going to put our four ways on after we pull ahead and just park it and go grab lunch and then uh, okay. give me a call when you get it unloaded. That works. <laughs> Just kidding. All the axles on it. Let's see. 7860. Looks good to me. This was a pretty good system and it did adapt over time. We started out with just robbing the telehandler, grabbing individual bales with the grapple, and feeding three of us to feed the Baron. Well, that was a lot on Robbie because he was not only feeding us, but he was also managing the bundles on the back end. So we put a tarp down so the mud didn't get involved in the bottom of the bales, and Mr. Chad Gargus hopped in the other telehandler and started feeding me and his brother to feed the Baron while Robbie managed the bundles and the stacking into the barn. Uh, we had some knotter issues. We got in there and addressed it, and we didn't have a single problem afterwards. But by the end of this, we were extremely tired. As you can see, we have a pile in front of the Baron pickup. Uh, this particular batch had some dockweed presents, a bit heavier in some bales than others. So we were trying to sort out the worst of the bales uh, so that we could create individual bundles of the weediest bales, and it makes it a lot easier to market them accordingly. By the end of this, we were really whooped, super tired. Not a lot of post-production filming of this particular process, but we got it done. We're happy we did it, and this hay already sold. So all in all, it was an eventful, good little afternoon routine for us. I really intended on giving you guys more of an update on that load, but we are whooped, like seriously whooped. Um, put the camera down and it didn't come back out, and then the phone kept ringing and whatnot. So we got it done. I hope the time lapse showed everything in full and you guys got the gist. That uh, particular batch of the farmer brought had quite a bit of dockweed in some of the bales. So if you saw us organizing a pile um, off to the side, we were throwing out the bales with heavier dockweed in them and trying to consolidate them and figure out what to do. Dockweed is an annoyance that we all face in some of our mixed fields, meaning an alfalfa and a grass, because it's really hard to spray for, because dockweed itself is a broadleaf. So a lot of the popular sprays you'd use to manage it would also kill alfalfa. So it's just something uh, so Ohio and I'm sure other state farmers deal with. A lot of the hay that we brokered, especially first cutting, I, I see it in a ton of it. And we've done our hardest to combat it and a lot of our fields are clean now, but it takes, takes a little bit. I know. We have our last situation of hay coming in today and I'm excited to show you about it. So we have this semi coming in that is filled with 35 bale baron bundles. And the last time we unloaded this, well not the last time, the last time we got it on video, it was a pretty good video. And a lot of you had questions and concerns and comments and six. And a lot of you had questions and concerns and comments and 
it was nice to see. So I'd like to address some of those. Well, I'll show you that we're gonna pull it out again. And I'm gonna give you the time frame because we're gonna be fast. We've been doing pretty good with this. We unloaded some three by three large squares from Canada the exact same way we've been doing these bundles. And it's really not that slow. This guy knows the gist. This is like his sixth load for us. So we'll park him here and we'll get rolling. I gotta get my handy dandy board and my handy dandy ratchet. And for you guys who didn't watch the last video, Rob's gonna be able to pull out, I think maybe the first 12 bundles or so just by booming into the truck with the telehandler. And then we're gonna have to rig up our ratchet and board and pull out the remaining, I don't know, 25 or so, 23. Yeah, I got cold up here to be south. That's warm yeah. down there. <laughs> Everyone seems to say that. It's either colder or breezier here. Or so this is the trustworthy timber right here. And this is the lucky strap that we use. She's been getting a lot of work lately. That is Rob's second grab in seconds. Four o'clock. This is gonna be hard to show on camera because I'm just trying to get out of here for the day. I will take the board and slide it on the eight strings of the two bottom bundles, then wrap the ratchet behind it with a loop, snug it up, and we'll pull them back. And it seems to work pretty well for the most part. I would like to point out the height of this particular product. A lot of people mentioned a walking for a trailer, which is all cool and dandy. They typically are not full height. I'm not sure if they even exist. They're, they're a foot shorter than some of these standard vans. So the way we handle these bundles, it would never fit in the trailers. So I appreciate all the helpful suggestions and comments from people, but we have thought of the walking floors and they're just unfortunately not a match for us. But you're gonna see this didn't take that long. And by the time Robbie gets done setting that hay down, I'll have already been up there strung the stuff together for him to pull out. So it, it's really not that slow. See, a walking floor would be nice because he could come in and just grab it, but he's not waiting that long with me. Easy. 
So we have Rob right now pulling out the last bundle. Under 30 minutes unload. I just don't think that's that bad. There's quite a few comments on the last video about how it's dumb to haul in a box van and this is crazy. I can't believe you're wasting the trucker's time. Uh, just countless things. Under 30 minutes, I just don't know what you guys are talking about. And if I'm wrong, let me know. But there's a lot of places that won't even unload a flatbed in 30 minutes.